Hey, mate. Welcome to an episode of ARG that's down under, down yes. and dirty. I'm Amigo Aaron, joined by a man that is referred to as our own personal wallaby. It's the Brent. Hey, how's it going? Not so bad. Not so bad. We're not ill this week, man. Well, not as ill. That's correct. <laughs> But you still you sound good. Uh, I, I feel I feel much improved. How many weeks were you down, beat down, so we no one could hear you or understand what you said? About three. Uh huh. And so how doesn't it feel great to feel good? It, it well, I, I'll let you know. Well, listen, <laughs> you know what makes me feel good when we get a big surprise, right? A big happy surprise that makes me feel so happy. And this week's system was an absolute surprise because yeah. I had no, not only did I not know what the system was all about i got the wrong system yes. i didn't i started the week researching the incorrect system yeah so brent the wheel spun it and we played it this week we're looking at the dick smith electronics system 80 man yes. oh the system 80. now uh for those that are unaware dick smith electronics was uh, was and still continues to be an electronics uh uh Produce or manufacture, I guess. That Not works. so much now. now. It, it, well, they now they're online, but it, back in the '80s, these guys had stores all over Australia, and New Zealand, and as you can see here, we are in the outback, outback country, man. What do you know about Australia and their uh, computer? And they're always sort of last to the party on console releases, aren't they? they? Well, you know, there's a lot of ocean between them and everyone else. That's. <laughs> So that's a, that's a that's, valid point. That slows down stuff, man. And also, I want to correct you. It's the Dick Smith Super Eighty. No, it's the System Eighty. Super, it's the system Super 80. Eighty. Super Eighty. Well, I think. Well, it's the System Eighty. Super Eighty. Well, you can Super say that, 80. but I don't care. So, what do you know about the? Now, I, I know the answer. To this. What did you know about the Dick Smith System Eighty before we uh, before we spun that bad boy? Had you ever even heard of this? I thing? absolutely knew nothing Had you heard about of Dick the Super Smith? Eighty. No. Just a little background on Dick Smith, just a small tangent because I don't know that much. Uh, Mr. Smith was a, apparently he was some sort of electronic technician. He was a, a good angler. He was a good player. He parlayed his success into an, a, a thriving uh, electronics business. And uh, if you uh, look at some of the old commercials and stuff from the uh, early days of the Dick Smith electronics in the early 80s there, they're wacky. Uh, yeah, they are. They're all, most of his ads are tongue-in-cheek or goofy. He sort of got a rep down there for being just kind of, you know, easy. He poked foot of himself, kind of wacky guy. That's pretty much the extent of what I know about him. Uh, but the Dick Smith System 80, quite a machine, uh, this thing, if I may say. Well, uh, you know, this it, it, the way their store started out. Yeah, oh, you got something? Yeah, yeah. well, I mean, they when the uh, Dick Smith Electronics first came out, they were the radio shack of Australia. I, that's the way I sort of figured it, and, yeah. And... Uh, they actually have a lot of online tutorials about uh, putting together like ham radios. They, I mean, you can go and watch right now, and they are excellent at describing what a transistor does, what a resistor does, all this stuff. And you, they really <laughs> built off that until that was no longer a sustainable business. Yeah. And uh, when it that does happened, sound like Radio Shack there, yeah. But they actually made the transition. To be a big box store, more of a uh, for the U.S. audience, uh, a Best Buy. Yeah. Right. And that was actually running really well for them, and then it wasn't. And this was a this was a company it's that like was like a Circuit City. Well, yeah. So Circuit City died right now. <clears throat> but but they didn't. They Dick Smith didn't make mistakes along the line, uh, along the way, uh, like any failed retailer does. But uh, something about the Dick Smith was they were. Going strong, had hundreds of locations, and six months, bam, gone. Really? Gone. It was crazy how fast they fell off. Now, they're they're an online retailer now, from what I've heard. The name, yeah. The right. name lives on. I like the fact that Dick Smith's big grinning face is on everything. Yeah. Even in the demo for this machine, is that they print up a Dick Smith yes. face. Then a picture of Australia. Yeah, so <laughs> I thought that was great. So, let's talk about the... Uh, the Dick Smith System 80. Now, the funny thing about the System 80, let's 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 unleash the beast right out of the gate. All right, the Dick Smith System 80 is basically a clone of the TRS 80 Model One. Absolutely. All right. Now, believe yes. it or not, I am old enough that the first computer I ever messed with was one of the TRS 80 Models One or Two. I don't remember which one it was. All right. They had one 
We had one at one of my at my middle school. I have a question for you. Yeah. Did you use? Uh, I believe the name of the program was Pogo, where you drew things with a turtle. Listen, I don't remember that far back. Okay. That was uh, something very popular that I did when I was a child on those computers. I don't remember ever actually... I'm not sure I ever touched this thing. Because computers at the middle school, when they had a computer... Keep in mind, they had a computer. Yeah. All right? And you, it was no touchy for most of the time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Because, yeah. they, you know, kids would be like, Hey, I just had a peanut butter sandwich. Let's stick the rest of it in the, in the computer and see yeah. what it does. See if we can make more. Uh, so, when this thing debuted... It was around, from what I've been able to ascertain, it was around 600, 660 U.S. dollars, which was two thirds the cost of a of a of a TRS eighty Model One. So you're yeah. getting a good deal. So how did this whole thing come about? Well, the Dick the Dick Smith people wanted to get in in the game. They thought there was a, a room there to get into the computer market. And they knew they thought if they could undercut a, a computer like the Model One, that there were, the Model One had been out for a while at this mm-hmm. point, that that they would have a, there'd be a universe of software waiting to be tapped at a discounted price. Good, it was a good plan. Uh, so they hooked up with an outfit out of Hong Kong named EACA. All right, in '78, these guys were basically making electronic toys, but they had come up with a gimmick. And they also did ping pong, you know, pong type games too. Right. And so they were ready to, to go to work and they ended up making this conversion. Uh, they thought about doing an Apple II, but they but they decided it was good that would be too pricey. So they went with the uh, the TRS eighty model one as their clone. But they added some stuff and it was actually pretty cunningly done. Now this computer, the Dick Smith it's funny because we didn't know this when we put this on the wheel or anything about it. But the Dick Smith uh, System 80 is basically a renamed computer uh, that was had several other names. Uh, it was also the vi- the, it w- the Video Genie in Europe, if you've ever heard of that. I have not, all right. That's a good name, isn't it? That's what do you pretty like good. Better? Is that better than the Dick Smith System 80? No, I love Dick Smith yeah. Super 80. And, then, and apparently this machine was also marketed in the States as the PMC 80. Now, I, of That's course, horrible. You're talking about, this is well before our time. You know, so that, <laughs> this basically this this was way back. So, uh, lo and behold, here comes the the system the, the system eighty. Now, what's a system eighty got? First of all, if you if you're looking at it on the video here, you've got you've got a, a, a an all in one type machine mm-hmm. that's that is uh, <clears throat> kind of flanked by two simulated woods uh, angled pieces on the side. So it's it's actually. Uh, I think it's an awesome looking. I machine. think it looks great. It's got the, it's got a keyboard, and then off to the side of the keyboard on the, on the on the right hand side, you've got your cassette deck. Now you've also got a on beside from the cassette deck. If you look above the cassette deck on the, and some models didn't ship with this, but later on they figured out they needed it. There's a little volume control, and there's also a little like uh, uh, sensor thing that tells you your volume level, right? The 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 system eighty is just like any other computer that works with a tape. You need to have that volume. In a certain Just range, so. right? Yep. And if it's not there, you got a problem. Yep. And so this is a good idea. It's like a, it's it'll almost like a little equalizer. It lets you it lets you hone in on the exact right point where your cassette's going to be perfect when it loads. Uh, this thing has Microsoft Basic on it, so it was, has, has a licensed copy of Microsoft Basic. Yep. Uh, uh, this also has on the back. Uh, it had some things that the Model One didn't have. Uh, it has a, a port for a external tape drive. Now, this is a good idea in case the one inside of it breaks. Yes. You know, among other things. It's got a button on the back that'll let it go from, uh, like, it'll ba- go to 32 columns. It'll, it'll basically extend the extre- screen size. You can hook this thing up to a monitor. It's got a monitor jack, and if you're looking at the picture that we've got on the screen, that's, that monitor is the uh, monitor that would have that was a computer monitor the day that would have shipped right. with this thing. You could also, on the bottom of it, it had an RF cable to extend it yes. out, and you could hook it into a television. So you couldn't do that on the Model nope. 1s either. And that's a great idea. Yeah, that's a good idea. <clears throat> uh, and that's sort of what that video switch in the back is. So if, if your computer's, if your TV screen's a little bit fuzzier, you can sort of ch- it automatically change the resolution, basically. Uh, you all, And, of course, it had a gimmick in the back that you could wind the RF and the power cable around. The power supply was built into this machine. Yeah. And but, but from what I've read, it literally you could slide it right out, and so it was actually pretty easy to you know if, you, if it went bad on you to pop a new one in. So they they did they crossed a lot of their uh, T's and dot a lot of the I's on this thing to to make it work. Now 
It did have an expansion port on the back. The expansion port was not compatible with the TRS-80 Model 1. It was lar larger expansion port. But what they did was, I thought this was real clever. You know, like, for example, an Amiga, you, you, on the 500 or the 1000, 1200, you, you sort of, you sort of, or not the 1200, but you sort of modulate out to the side of yes. it, right? These, the, this extender on the back the, of the, uh, the expansion cable, you would put a ribbon cable in it, and they, they, had, they made an expansion box that went on the back. And they made this yeah. thing so you could set your TV on it, yep. your monitor. So it really didn't take up any more space. And then you could run ribbon cables off of it and run them the floppy drives, among other things. So it was actually a pretty well thought out it, machine. It was very clever. They had a it couple. Was very there clever. were a couple screw ups though. Oh, this yeah. On the first couple model renditions of these, they didn't have all the keys they needed to really emulate a lot of the to 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 work with a lot of the TRC Model One stuff, especially games like it lacked. I believe it lacked a clear button, and the, and it also didn't have any uh, arrow buttons on it. Now they they. Pretty early on, much like the equalizer thing on the cassette, they sort of got that taken care of. And then what you had there uh, going forward was a, a pretty decent little machine. And from yeah. all accounts, I actually watched a guy fire one of these things up uh, on YouTube and, and play with it. And I was, it, it, you know, fired right up and played well. It's a, it's an attractive unit, isn't it? Now you've seen the, you've seen the TRC models ones, the Model two. These look like, a, these look like a. a kind of a space age sort of computer with everything built into one big box. This is a more of an attractive unit, I think, and it's probably a little more usable, I would say. I, what, what were your thoughts on I, it? I thought that the case was was very clever. I did too. The, uh, I, I have to say I agree with you on that. Uh, it was unfortunate that they had the issues that they had on the first launch. I actually don't think that really hurt them. Uh, did you have you didn't find any sale numbers on this, did you? I did not. I yeah. didn't see any sale levels. Um, I talked to a few people yeah. that said that they had owned one of these, and uh, I don't know if they owned one of the earlier ones or what else, but they said that it, the machine was uh, uh, not reliable. Oh, really? Yeah, and I don't now I don't know their experience level. This was just me talking to some guys in chat. Uh, they said that uh, their ones at school seemed to work better than their ones at home, so I didn't know if there was a a difference between those either. I would assume not. It, it, these were pretty much all standard components, right? Yeah. I should mention what's in this thing. Uh, and I, as I mentioned, this was announced in 79, but it didn't release until right around summer of 1980. Yeah. But would you think about that? I thought it was that? the end of 80, but yeah. When you think about that, uh, uh, they <laughs> there's a big gap in there. And it, going along the lines of what you said, I read this. Uh, the first bunch of these that came out had a lot of uh, had a lot of failures, a lot of hardware failures, and so there there there's a there's a much like the old original Xbox, even the 360. That first batch, you get, they kind of had to refine, yeah, you know, before they moved on. So this features a uh, a uh, Zilog Z80 proc rolling at 1.76 megahertz. Of course, it's a monochrome machine. Oh yeah. Now you had the thir thirty-two by sixteen text, and then if you hit the button, you could go into that sixty-four by sixteen. It had one hundred twenty-eight by forty-eight block graphics. Of course, we mentioned it had to composite out, or and it, uh, the, it had the uh, it's basically a monitor out. It had the yeah. RF out. It had sixteen K of RAM expandable to forty-eight. That's not bad. Yeah. You know, twelve uh, K of ROM, and that and it had Microsoft Level Two Basic. The, uh, the cassette deck that was built in was a 500 baud cassette deck. Uh, this thing, of course, of course, it had a built-in power supply. This thing could be hooked up to uh, 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 disk drives, modems. I mean, it was it was your standard gimmick. I mean, it, it, it was it was a pretty decent little little machine. It had a, you know, of course, they had the uh, uh, you could get a printer port add-on. They actually sold a package with a printer. In fact, I, uh, one of the fellas I watched on YouTube, and I remember, this sort of took me back to back in the day. He said, that, of course, they had a picture of this thing with the printer and all the stuff with it. Take yeah, up a whole like, table. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And the printer's massive. It's one of those dot matrix And I remember, and the guy said he remembers that this thing would, would rock the, the table when it printed. Oh, yes. And I remember back in the day, when you, and I, I don't know if you remember this, but those, those, uh, dot matrix printers, they would literally shake the table. Absolutely. Because that carriage would, I mean, it was moving fast and it was big. 
big, bulky, heavy carriage moving back and forth. Their big old motor. You could use those things for earthquake tests. Yeah, it was, just set it on a bridge, tell it to print something, and watch the bridge shake. Yeah, it was. I, I, I really thought those. I, I thought those things. You know, the one thing about those old printers is they always worked. They always and they always they, you could always re-ink the thing just by taking like I mean I, you could take anything re-ink Felt the ribbon pit pins, yeah you know and it was and it was always cool now so the Dick Smith uh, and then, of course it just ran its course they, 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 you know and then before they moved on to different models uh, 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 you know of computer of course we're gonna get we're not done with Dick Smith's electronics because uh, it's funny when we did the wheel. I didn't pay attention and thought we were going to be talking about the Dick Smith Wizard, the the, du- the double Z Wizard, yeah, which which uh, uh, Gary Hucker did a great video on and introduced me to this thing, and I've been <laughs> in love with one ever since. And so, and that one we're definitely going to put on the wheel. But you know, we've got several uh, of our good buddies that lived down in Australia, New Zealand, in that mm-hmm. area, including the Hug and, and Gary uh, and uh, uh, Graham, a bunch of guys. So. I, want. Yep. And I will say this: uh, apparently, this is a, not an easy get anymore. This computer, uh, it's it's a tough one to find. So I want before we get into our main games, let's talk about because I went through and played a bunch of these games, uh, and you can, and amongst the games I played, I, again we, I, me and Brent both wanted to get something we knew would run on the Dick Smith because it wasn't a hundred percent compatibility yeah. on this thing. Correct, and so. We, uh, I went through and watched a lot of videos and played a lot of games uh, on this thing. And let me tell you something I, I found out. And we're not done, by the way, with the model, TRCA Model 1. It's going to have to go back in the wheel at some point or Model 2. <laughs> because this thing is a game-playing son of a gun. It is. I could not believe how much fun these games were. Yep. I was baffled. Baffled, I tell you. They run really well, and you can tell that the programmers knew how to overcome the shortcomings of what they had to work with and did an awesome job. Could you believe the sound? Yeah, it was really Some good. of these games had digitized speech. Yeah. I couldn't, how the heck did they do that? Now, from what I read, it was all software driven, however they did it. the uh, It's almost like a big, chunky Vectrix. I mean, it sounds like the Vectrix too. It's it, it's uh, these games were off the charts. I played about two dozen games. I sat down and played them, uh, and this thing blew my mind. It blew my mind. Did you have any standouts that you played? I I didn't go through nearly as many games as you did, but I know the games that I did play. All of them were clever. All of them ran like a dream. Yeah, uh, which. I mean, I'll, that's the, the biggest thing I was surprised with was the uh, uh, frame rates on these things. They they very very comparable, very uh, uh, fun. The controls were all good. Now, one thing I will say, there is certainly some games where they do uh, a kind of antsy art that they shift back and forth that makes like a flashing effect. Yeah. that's no good. That's no good. Yeah, you're gonna. It's not gonna be super duper smooth. But I mean, the guys that put these games together, they were masters of they their were. craft. Absolutely. They were, and you got to think of the of the uh, system, the system require restrictions that they were operating under. I couldn't freaking believe it. Yeah. I really, I was really stunned by how good these were. Uh, so I guess what I'm suggesting is, I. We found a, a website. I'm going to have to link it down there that has a bunch of these old disc images. Yeah. It's funny that our games, before we even picked them, uh, our games, we found out that it's on the same compilation yeah. disc. So it was actually very convenient uh, to to have them on there. Uh, but uh, you can get these. They're totally free to download compilation disc. And, they, and emulating this thing is not that tough. Uh, you, uh, it was surprised. I mean, literally, you just basically type in the name of the game once you have the disc installed, and you're good. That was all I had to do. Now, I was sh- should say, I emulated these on a straight on a straight up uh, uh, TRS-80 Model One emulator. Yeah. Uh, which effectively will work, but I made sure these games work because there was not 100% compatibility. Correct, there were some right. differences. But it was mostly compatible. But I did make sure. In fact, the game I picked, I, and also I saw Brent's game there too. I saw on a when I looked through a list of uh, of, of Dick Smith System eighty games. They were just, it, and it's the only mention of, of my game I've ever seen on the. I, trust me, I scoured it to try to find anything on my game, and it was only the only time I ever saw it was one guy playing it one time uh, on a video. I can even go one better for emulation. Yeah. 
uh, there are TRS-80 Model 1 Java emulators. Yeah. Click, go, loads the game, you're playing it. Oh, yeah. And also, I think MESS will support the, I, the yes, Smith they will. And, the, and, the, yeah. and the thing. So, I mean, this game, I, 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 I'm excited, I, I, as you know about this one. Yeah. I'm real excited because I, I, I had a week of joy playing these games. I mean, it really was. I, I had so much fun. I can't emphasize it enough. If you're going to check out one of these systems that we cover, and this one's easy, uh, go grab go grab a, a look at it. I mean, I was surprised. I thought these were going to be the clunkiest piece of crap. I was around for a lot of the DOS days and the Do and early DOS games. I thought these are all garbage. Now, these games here on the TRC Model 1 and its clones, impressive. Yep. So let's go ahead and kick right in. I'll go ahead and start the show this week. Sounds good. With my game. And we're going to be looking at a game that I stumbled upon in a video <laughs> strictly called Convoy. We got ourselves a convoy. convoy. You need to wear a trucker Brent, your trucker get Brent attire. There, there it is. <laughs> that was all it was. So, of course, Convoy, a game that was, in fact, for the TRSA Model 1 and its clones. Now, I'm not going to lie to you, folks. Uh, finding information on Convoy was difficult. Uh, in fact, it was nigh impossible, so I'm going to give you everything I've got. Um, this game came out in 1983, published by Trend Software. Now, Trend Software, I tried my best to look into them. They're famous for one title, and it's not Convoy. It's a game uh, which I believe was on, I know it's on the Coco, and I believe it also got a, uh, released on uh, uh, the TRSA models, and maybe a few other systems. It's called Demon Seed. Now, I played yeah. Demon Seed. I, I think I'd played this before on the Coco. It's sort of a Phoenix yeah. type thing, and it's really good. It's a very clever game, but this, I think, is a better game. Now, who did this game? Now, get this, Brett. This blew my mind. Uh, this game was done by uh, two fellows, Philip McKin uh, McKenzie and Jeff Sorensen. All right? Now, I knew their names were familiar to me, but I didn't know why, so I did some digging. If you're an old Amiga or Atari ST guy, you'll remember these guys because they did a port, they did a, 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 a an homage, a clone of Spy Hunter for the Atari ST called Major Motion. Huh. And then this was also ported to the Aussie by a guy, but he was credited to these two. That's where I'd seen their names. Major Motion was a great, uh, I mean, it was the best clone of Spy Hunter. I mean, I don't know. If, I can't think of anything that didn't come close to being as good as that in terms of Spy Hunter. Can you? I, I don't recall the game offhand, oh, so I can't really You don't comment. remember it? You used to play it. Well, it was, it's I'll a, believe you. It's a great game. and and so, But these guys had the jack early on. They also did Demon Seed, like I mentioned. And they also did a game called Mud Pies, which Mud Pies is another game that got, uh, I believe it's a, I didn't play Mud Pies. I don't know if it's a, it might be a food fight. Uh, homage, probably, like that. yeah. So these guys are—I guess they were sort of like a team, you know. Uh, like I said I couldn't find anything on Trend Software. I can tell you that this game and much and Brent's game both appeared on the programs, uh, uh, one of the programs on the More Arcade One Disc compilation, which yeah. we'll, I'll link that. I've got, I've got a bunch of links at the bottom of this, including the—it's gonna be link a yeah, including the people that I got the videos from. So now. Uh, both the videos of these games, I couldn't find good ones, so I had to make them, <laughs> yeah. which I rarely do. So Convoy, <clears throat> and, and you're going to see a little bit of line stuttering if you're watching the video. It's because of the, just the way the emulator generated these videos. So what is Convoy? Convoy puts you in charge of a, a tank. And this is a simple game in, in a lot of ways. What The goal of this game, someone's, some, someone must have been sitting around. Maybe it was uh, McKenzie and Sorensen. They're like, you know... What we need is, we need a game that combines Battle Zone and Crossbow. That's what we need. And by God, they did it. It's called Convoy. So, you are in charge of getting three semi-trucks from one base to another. Yeah. It's that simple. And it's a straight road. All right? No problem, right? Well, there's a slight problem. Every bit of military and and mythology and mythological creature on Earth is trying to stop these trucks. <laughs> they, I don't know what's in these trucks, but, but it, they it, want it. They yeah. want it bad. And so your trucks go to a, a basically across this straight line in the middle of the screen from one side to the other, and at the end of the line is a the scrolling screen. Yeah, it's a scrolling you need to mention, screen. This is, a, this is actually the equivalent of about 
nine or ten screens wide. Yeah, it scrolls and it, and it scrolls, and it, and so the truck and the trucks roll by, and it's it it now again this you you got some chunky graphics here, so yeah. get that out of your system now. Oh, it's yeah. So you are in a tank, and your goal is to shoot down everything that comes near those trucks. <laughs> okay, the trucks have ultra written on the side. And you'll notice as trucks take hits, that old, that logo gets smaller and smaller. And if they if the logo disappears, the truck explodes. Yeah. All right. So, and there's a mountainous terrain in the background. And apparently, each level of this is the exact same area. I'm assuming just uh, it's the same trucks too, because eventually, as you yeah. lose them, so I don't know what's going on here. <laughs> this this base. So, I, well, here's what it is. Yeah. The trucks start off full, right? Yeah. And they go, and everyone wants their cargo, and they're trying to get it, yeah. right? And then the trucks get to their destination, they unload. Then they drive those empty trucks back. Well, no one cares about empty trucks. Yeah. So then you have to <laughs> fill them back up. They fill them back up, and you, you, you got to protect them. Apparently, again. They, we can afford the world's best tank, but we can only afford three trucks. That's it. <laughs> so anyway, the first level of this starts innocently enough. You're driving the trucks over, and jets fly by, yeah. and the jets will occasionally drop a bomb. And that's how they try to hurt your trucks. And so you can shoot the bombs, and you can also shoot the jets. Yep. Simple enough. Uh, then in the second level, they ramp it up. Then you've got the same thing. You're getting your trucks to the finish line. You've got jets, and you also got helicopters. Helicopters can stop on the dime. They can turn. They drop bombs. They drop bombs with way more precision. Right. I always tell. Yeah. Well, they it, which would be you would you would think it'd be easier to drop a bomb out of a helicopter. They can hover right over the target. Then you've got your. Then you go down your third level, and this is what I like about this game. This is what makes this game fun because every level they add something. So the third level comes around, and now your tank rolls at the bottom of the screen, and you're sort of unmolested by everybody. The third level changes that. They put a bomb at the bottom of the screen that you have to blow up. I should mention that your tank. You don't just shoot straight up. That's for losers. Yeah. This is a proper tank, and you use the turret to move around. You use strangely you use the up arrow and the Q button on yeah, the keyboard. Yeah, that was poor choice. Yeah, but well, we'll I'm sure they, I'm sure that made sense on the actual on the actual machine. But you, that one button will move the turret one way, and one button moves the turret the other, and you stop you stop pushing the button when it gets to where you want it. It takes some getting used to. Doesn't it does. It? But that's part of the game. So when a bomb shows up at the bottom of the screen, you've got to move your turret all the way to the point at the bomb and shoot it. It's yeah. right beside you. And otherwise, if you hit it, you blow up and you lose a tank. And you for, want for those not able to watch the video, the, the game plays on two planes. You're at the very bottom of the screen where bombs show up. Yeah. And then halfway up the screen is where the trucks are actually driving. Right, right. <clears throat> so then you get to your fourth level, all right? The fourth level is when it, they ramp everything up a little bit. Yeah. And then, and, and these levels sort of blur in my mind as I go past them, but eventually meteors start showing up. I don't know why. I don't know what's happening. Well, if you notice in the background, the, the, the road is all straight. Yeah. <coughs> Excuse me. But in the background is a mountainous terrain yeah. where there are vol erupting volcanoes yeah. so at all times. So one would assume there's rocks are flying. Right. They're By from the way, the that's volcanoes. another, another call back to Battle Zone, I might add, yeah. the old erupting volcano. I love that, by the way. So you have to deal with these uh, chunks of rock careening towards your trucks. Then, that's not enough. The next level, it gets real weird when basically demons show up from yeah. demon attack. That's what they look like to me. Luke... I always thought they were pterodactyls. <laughs> yeah, Luke Luke didn't think they were demons. He thought they were... What was he? He said they were big birds. But they're, yeah. I think they're demons. They look like the demons from demon attack. And, they're, and they also shoot down and, and drive you nuts. So you've got demons. you got... You got bombs, you got jets, you got helicopters, you got rocks. Then, the next level, these, like, the eye of, uh, what was the thing in Lord of the Rings? Sauron. So, <laughs> the eye, basically, these, these throbbing eyeballs show up. Uh, they're sideways eyeballs, and they are hovering around, and these things are much more maneuverable than anything yeah. else. And they are jerks. They're all over the place. Uh, and you've got to shoot these things down. Again, you've got a limited amount of trucks. Anytime your trucks take damage, like I said, that little logo on the side wears away until it, or, until they blow up. Essentially, they can take six hits. Right, and so when the trucks go away, you're down to however many trucks you got left. So you could you could have four tanks, but if you lose all your trucks, you're dead. Right. On the converse, if you had all your tanks, or you had all the trucks, but you ran out of tanks, you're dead. Yep. Which that never happened to me. So 
what you've got at this point is you've got the eyes, you've got the meteors, you've got the demon, you've got the helicopters, you've got the tanks, all right, and you've got the bombs at the bottom of the screen. The next level, <laughs> yeah, I, I never got past this. I, I didn't either. The next level introduces landmines that that are in front of the trucks. Yeah, on the same plane as the as the trucks you're protecting. And so once your truck hits these things, they just blow up. The first and time I huge, got to them, and there's a lot of them. The yeah. first time I got to them, I thought, oh, that's, they're going to go over a little hill, and then my truck blew up. I was like, oh, that's yeah. not a little hill. <laughs> yeah. I'm, so you guys, I, I, so we both pretty much died at the same spot. Yeah. I got to this, I got to that level a couple times, but I, I never even came close to getting past it. The gameplay in this, <clears throat> I don't think I've ever played a game that was anything like this, except like I said, it was like a, a, sort of like crossbow, but in crossbow. You're not really in any immediate jeopardy. And also, the, this introduces a lot more... Um, I love the way they ramp this up. I really love yeah. it. And this goes to show you, this is the perfect... In fact, both these games, but this one especially. Because if you look at it, uh, uh, cold. You're like, look at this blocky disaster. It's Because there's so much going on. I yeah, mean, everything they, you shoot explodes yeah. into pixels. Yeah. So, th- th- the screen is utter chaos. Yeah. But, and so, good and, chaos. And it, it, but it does, I never had any, of course, that we were emulated, but I never heard any lag or anything like that. But no, smooth as uh, hell. Uh, this game is shows you that like games are about the gameplay. It really does. Yeah. And, but I will have to say, given what they had to work with, that I knew exactly what was happening. I understood the rules of the game. There was never any question. I never thought it was cheap. I thought everything ran smoothly. Uh, the uh, uh, the effects of the volcano. Also, like stuff will come up from behind the mountain. I thought that was a cool yeah. touch. Yeah, nice uh, a, a t- tad bit of scaling. The explosion. Uh, it's just a slick operation. Yeah. And I looked all over to find. I mean, I couldn't find anything about this game at all. I found zero. I found more, way more about Demon Seed. I think this is a way better game. I just, I guess, I just because it's so old, you know, and and uh, no one gives a crap about this stuff anymore. But hey, we care, don't we? We, we care, do. We care plenty. Um, <coughs> needless to say, I looked on eBay for this. I couldn't find. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know. I'm a glutton for punishment. But I looked on eBay. I couldn't find any information about it. I looked on. Uh, uh, I looked for reviews. Yeah. I mean, I, I literally found no mention yeah. of this game anywhere. It's just a nameless old game on a nameless compilation disc that you'll never know existed. Until now. I love it. I love it. Uh, I, I, again, this is this is another one. I put it in that Yeti category. This is a true hidden gem uh, for me. Now, what did you think about it? And how did you, what did you think when you first saw it? And how did, did you, I know obviously you enjoyed it, but what I, when I, well, I'll tell you, it took me a few moments to appreciate this game and the reason why is the controls if you play them as is uh on an american keyboard are awkward yeah using one and q to adjust your turret uh basically left and right but using up and down motions i understand that you point it up and then it goes to the left or right but it was very i had trouble grasping that when I got a few games in, uh, and games last between, I mean, when you when you first start out, a game might last four or five minutes, and when you get good, the games might last twelve minutes. They, they, yeah. <laughs> so I mean, you're not you're not going to sit down and play forever on this, unless you're. Re- I mean, if you're really good, like I would love to have this on the arcade machine where I can have the button set up, or like even rig up a joystick to do the torrent. You know what I'm saying? Then you've got something. Uh, or a dial would be awesome. That'd be awesome yes, to have a it, dial yeah. on it. Yeah. Uh, once you understand the controls and you give yourself a little bit of time, <coughs> what to do was never a problem. Yeah. I mean, you knew exactly what you had to do. From the name and the graphics, everything is very clear. The, uh, the explosions are a bit much because there's so many of them, plus the volcano erupting. There is always stuff... Pieces of stuff flying around. It adds around. to the chaos, though. <clears throat> I mean, it is chaotic. It is. As hell. It's super yeah. chaos. Uh, once you settle into all that, you can start playing for score. And this, that's what this game is. It's a score game. Yeah. It's something where you play, you try to get a high score, then you let your buddy play, see how well they do, and then you play back and forth and you, you know, take it over high score spots. And that is an art form. Yeah. It is an art form 
four high score games, and this game does it very, very well. And you, and one thing, we, two things we should mention. One, that both these games have an awesome high score table, yep. which I love with all kinds of glitz and glamour. And two, this you're right because even when your trucks are safe, effectively, you still have a good angle of that cannon to shoot stuff, extra goodies, you yep. know, which I like. Or before your trucks come out, you can start going to war. Uh, the gameplay <coughs> elements of this were just very uh, unique. Yeah, because. All the planes flying around yeah. are almost just free points. Yeah. They so rarely drop bombs or anything that you, you don't... At least at the early levels. I don't know. Yeah. Like so I didn't get past level 6, uh, so I don't know what happened. The that. helicopters are the, are the first true threat in the game on level 2. Yeah. So, you, and there's tons of planes. They're flying around all over there. So you always have something to shoot But I, what I like is it ramps up the difficulty very nicely. It is a nice you curve. Know, it's not like, a, like an Amiga game or something where it's like mm. instant doom. I mean, no. they don't they don't show you all their cards on the first level. The game lets you lets you progress. I mean, when the bombs first started coming out, when I was first playing it, yeah, I died from them. Yeah, and then once I understood them, I knew what I had to do. I never died from them again. Yeah, it showed that I was able to improve on the game. Yeah, which is exactly what you need from a high score game. Uh-huh. Uh huh. And. I was doing consistently better the longer I played. This, this is the perfect arcade game. I mean, yeah. when they say it's an arcade game, it is. This is exactly what an arcade game does in the yeah. old days. Add an element. And, and this has, one thing I like, that there were, it kept adding elements. And who knows what's after the landmines? I don't know. Yeah. And since there's no videos to watch, we are the benchmarkers on this one, Brenny. Uh, you know, we did have a review come in from our good buddy, who could have owned the Dick Smith. You never know. Our buddy Graham. He writes... Uh, you control a tank, and you need to protect a convoy of trucks from an insane airstrike of planes and helicopters who drop bombs. This game controls quite well, and while the sprite detection isn't the best because, of, because it's all squares, I enjoy playing it. The game gets more complex at level 3 when you need to shoot at ground level objects as well. And this is when the stress level starts to go up, and I struggle to get past level 4. Overall, this is not a bad game for its time of release. 7 out of 10. So, yep. I, I would even go higher, personally. I, I think this is this is going to make my... Uh, if we ever do a top 10 or whatever, this is going to be in there because this one I, I was ultra, ultra pleased well, with. I, I, I came up with it last week, accidentally, a new scale of how I judge these games. What I Sexy go, Panther. Would I go and buy a Model 1 to play this? Yeah. No. Would I take the time to figure out an emulator to play this? Yes. Yeah. And I think everyone else should. This too. made me want to buy a Dick Smith System 80. That's all I needed to say. So now, I, think, I guess it goes without saying I enjoyed Comp and I think you did too. So we're going to move on to Brent's game. Brent, now what did you, you had? Uh, uh, I mean, there were a ton of games, by the way. There were hundreds of games. Yeah. So what did you pick out of the mix, my friend? I, I went for something I re- vaguely recall playing from my childhood, and I wanted to see how it translated. And I picked Outhouse. Outhouse. <laughs> now this is a game we would have played on the old Coco back yes. in the day. Yes, yep. Well, there, Outhouse was actually good enough that they had uh, several releases of it, including uh, a color version later down the line. Mm. Uh, not programmed by the same guy exclusively. He actually pulled in help for it. Um, but this, for the for the Model 1 or the Super 80, as it were, uh, what a game. Holy cow. You know, but, before <clears throat> you get into it, you should explain what an Outhouse is. For those that don't know... We know. <laughs> yeah. There are parts in this state where people are still using outhouses where, uh, especially in one like hunting ground, uh, uh, where access to plumbing is, is non-existent due to the distance out. Uh, an outhouse is basically a structure away from your normal house uh, that is literally a large hole in the ground uh, for you to go and use the bathroom. <laughs> yeah. And normally they you have uh, you put stuff in the hole to kind of uh, de- decompose things uh, and, and keep the smell down a little bit. But literally, it's a little shack. Uh, think of a tool shed that sets over a hole in the ground for you to use the bathroom. That's right. And and they're and generally they're not heated. No. I remember going to uh, one of my uncles. Um, one of my uncles had an outhouse, and I remember going out there in the winter. And that sucked. It sucked so bad. You did not want to have to go to the bathroom. That would be a great diet plan. It's like if that, if we maybe I should get rid of our indoor plumbing to lose weight. It's like because that would change my eating habits substantially. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. So, <coughs> outhouse the game 
is uh, written by Jay Weaver Jr. It came out in 1982 uh, on disc and tape. It has sound. It has voices. You can use a joystick with it. It checks all the boxes. And uh, uh, I found the story of how this game, how the concept of this game actually happened. i got to hear this. So, uh, Jay Weaver Jr. was a... Uh, Ran a store okay. in Detroit, and okay. he, that's a surprise. And, and, and he his cash register was a Model One. Yeah. So, oh, okay. Yeah. You made a Terrence A Model One. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, after hours, his buddies would come over and they would buy computer games and they would play them on the on the uh, cash register. Yeah. And so he got into it and started programming. Because they were buying games, and, they, and he was starting to dabble into programming. So he would make little snippets. Basically, just little routines to, you know, like it might just be a ship flying over, or it might just be, uh, 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 you know, like flashes to try to simulate different things. And one of the snippets he made was a, was a stick figure who would pick up a box, he would walk to the middle of the screen, and he'd hit the side of the box, and the number would change from five to four. Yeah. And he was he was, thought he was alone. His buddies were in the back, you know, just screwing around. And someone yelled from the back, "What if that was an outhouse? And what if what if they were trying to steal toilet paper?" Just, just one of his buddies. He doesn't even know who said it. Yeah. And he was like, "Yeah, yeah. What if they were trying to steal toilet paper? I'm going to make a game about that." And yes. he did. That's awesome. And uh, uh, this turned out, this went on to be a very popular game. Sold incredibly well for him. Um, so let's talk about the gameplay of Outhouse. You are an alien spaceship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and your entire goal is to protect this outhouse from thieves, from uh, 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 squatters, from other mythological aliens and, and and crushing units and all this stuff that are assaulting this outhouse for some reason. Why does it say why? It never does. I tried to find <laughs> Maybe that's the aliens outhouse. They're an advanced race, but you gotta go sometime. Well, there you go. And you don't want to go in the ship if it's not very big. <laughs> and and the way this game controls is you've got your arrow keys to fly around in eight directions. And if you hit the space bar and then hit one of those directions, or hold the space bar down and hit one of the directions, you will fire a laser in those eight directions. And you, your whole goal is to protect this outhouse. And the outhouse is in the middle of the screen, and it has a number on it. And that is how many sheets of toilet paper <laughs> that are still available in the outhouse. This game, much like Convoy, starts out easy with limited enemies, <clears throat> and then ramps up in difficulty. Yes. When you first start out, uh, humans are just trying to get to your outhouse. Some of them want to use your outhouse, and if, the, if they go into it and use it, you just lose 50 sheets of toilet paper. Yeah. I guess the guy, the, anyway. <laughs> you don't want to, get, <laughs> don't want to expostulate on that side. The other guy will <laughs> walk to your outhouse and actually steal toilet paper out of it, and he will actually take it and run <laughs> back to the edge of the screen with the toilet paper stretching behind you. He didn't take it off the roll. No, He just no. literally grabbed it and ran. And just ran. And this is, I, I, I was going to save this, but this is the best uh, component to this game. <laughs> it's funny. <clears throat> Not only is it funny, it is uh, so unique in its, the way it works. If you shoot the guy... The toilet paper re-rolls into the outhouse yeah. and you lose no like sheets. Like a blind. It just sucks back in. If you shoot the toilet paper, it will split wherever you shoot it and you will regain that much. And then the guy will run off the screen with yeah. the rest of it. Yeah. That is so well done. It's so clever. Yeah. It is so nice. It's horrible when you shoot that toilet paper out. I did that a bunch of times. You're like, oh. Because you... The way you lose this game is you either run out of ships, uh, which you start with three, or you run out of toilet paper. Right. <clears throat> I guess really the structure is not nearly as important 
as the toilet paper within. Although you can't, there are aliens that will destroy the outhouse too, and you lose. I mean, I didn't get that far. Yeah. So, <laughs> as the game progresses, you start getting more and more enemies. And the enemies on this are so freaking clever. Yeah. You've got zappers that will only come to the left and right of the screen. And they are just little guns. They're, they almost look like half your spaceship. Yeah. And they will come and follow you up and down. They will never move into the screen, just up and down on the edge of the screen. And when you stop moving, they will lock on, charge a laser, and then shoot a beam directly across the screen. You know what those reminded me of? What's and you're that? gonna know. Remember the landing section of Cosmic Arc? where you go down to pick up the aliens, and those things come on the side, and they yes. shoot the laser back and forth. Yes. And the funny thing about these lasers is if you get out of the way, they'll shoot each other. Yes. <laughs> yeah. It, I mean, they shoot, and if they shoot bad guys, they kill bad guys. Yeah, everyone's if they shoot in play. You, they shoot you. Yeah. <clears throat> in fact, anything that runs into anything else will explode. Yeah. So, friendly fire is definitely in one. Although, I think, really, the outhouse, it's every man for themselves. Because it's not like the aliens or the obstacles work together. No. They just it, they just all want it. This is like the only outhouse in like a 20-mile or 100-mile <laughs> radius. They're all converging on it. So the other uh, enemy in the game, are there's fireballs. And the fireballs are, are sort of like the uh, uh, debris from Convoy. They will just come onto the side of the screen and kind of fly towards your guy. Yeah. Um, if you shoot them, they blow up just like anything else. Yeah, they're just sort of, they're all like the jets. They're just there to clutter things up and be annoying. Uh, the other enemy is called an angler. And it is basically a right angle, a, an L or a backwards L, that will just fly towards your ship at a diagonal. Well, they, I thought they fly toward the outhouse at a diagonal. But they, well, yeah, you're, you are correct. And and they they come, <laughs> they, they literally are like arrows pointing toward, they're like almost, like the angle is the exact, they make them like arrows that are pointing yes. towards the outhouse. They just come down, they'll come down. Now, with those, I never, I never had one of those get down to the outhouse. I, I didn't either. I didn't either. I'm assuming that it would, it would destroy the outhouse if it did. Um, then you've got rotors. Which are basically like miniature helicopters. I never got that far to see them. Uh, yeah, they were just they just kind of fly around the screen and, and uh, uh, are an annoyance. They run into fireballs all the time though and explode. Yeah. So that's kind of nice. And then the <clears throat> last enemy is called the Crusher, and the Crusher comes in from the top of the screen. Yeah. And all it does is it goes to just just flatten the outhouse. It just goes straight from the top and is tries to fall straight down yeah so you have to protect this outhouse and at your disposal you have your lasers as i mentioned before <laughs> and you have smart bombs if you hit a smart bomb kills everything on the screen returns all the toilet paper if it's getting stretched out all good this game is an absolute blast to play it just like convoy nice steady ramp up in difficulty uh you get a bonus based on how much toilet paper you have left and what stage you're on. So it's a multiplying bonus. Plus you can get extra rolls. You, every 10,000 points, you get an extra ship. and uh, Or every four stages, you get 50 extra sheets of toilet paper. Um, an amazing ramp up. An amazing ramp up. Perfect for high score play. What did you think about this, Aaron? I really like this game a lot, actually. I thought it was a lot of fun. I really... I like said I remember playing this in the Coco, but I don't remember liking it at all that much. I don't know. If, I have to go back and play it, but this I really, I love this. I thought it was super great. Yeah. Uh, first of all, the the premise is ludicrous. This is like almost like a B or C movie type yes. premise. I like the fact that the UFO you could easily rig this up with like Robotron controls if you wanted to, uh, and 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 have or. And it would work great. I love the shooting mechanic that you can shoot all over. I mean, you can even shoot diagonally up. And I mean, you shoot yeah. it. You all can, eight eight cardinal you're, directions. You're in every direction's in play all yeah. the time, which is cool. Uh, much another thing it has in common with convoy is that you can die in a couple different ways. Yeah. You can lose all your ships. You can lose all your toilet paper. Uh, you can have your outhouse get attacked. Uh, uh, it's it's clever. It's got a variety of enemies. It does ramp up. Uh, it's it's uh, sound effects are great. Yeah, you know it's it's uh, there's no bad thing about it. The uh, the only thing that you will have to do I played this with the keyboard. 
I didn't use a joy. Did you try using a joy? No, I used keyboard. Um, keyboard, yeah. This is a game that you're going to get used to controls because it you I couldn't get it to let me use the number pad, so I you couldn't use like the number pad to shoot diagonally. Oh no, was, you had to actually hit. So down you had to and hit left. down and left, and so you had to hit it at the same time. So I was thankfully I've got the keyboard for the job. I was killing this thing. You know, whack, whack, like my dick can hear me in the next room hitting these buttons because you're and you're hitting them in so fast. The uh, ship in this reminds me of the ship in Laser Blast, I believe it is, on the uh, Atari, where you have that little ship that shoots the lasers down. Mm-hmm. You know, it's sort, mm-hmm. sort of like that. You didn't mention this, but there's also a smart bomb you can I use. I mentioned it. Oh, did you? I well, mentioned it. Where you can use it. I think you get two or th- you get three, three of those. Yeah, and you those get things, one, another one every 10,000 points. Those things are awesome. You, uh, and it, required. You, yeah. you hold you, you on, uh, at least on my computer, I, I you, you can hit any of the number keys and turn it off. Like you can hit, like, yeah, a, I hit gave one. you a bunch of options on those. The, the high score table on this is cool. The way the screen zooms in and out is stylish. The uh, scoring and the lettering is all cool looking. Yeah. It's great. I thought it was a, I thought it was great. Uh, this was this exceeded my expectations. I knew. Did you try to pick Outhouse at some other point in the past on a game on a system? I, I don't believe so. Well, I mean, this was a tremendous choice. Yeah. I thought it was I thought it was outstanding. I had the only flaw, and this is so so nitpicky. The only problem I had with this game <clears throat> is at the top of the screen, it had an arrow that would point to who, what player it was, player one or player two. Yeah. So I always saw it pointing to the left. But it was a flashing, scrolling arrow oh, yeah. that was busy for the sake of being busy. If it was just a static arrow pointing, it would have been fine. But when you've got so much stuff going on on the screen, yeah. uh it kept drawing my eye to it. And, and that, it doesn't hurt the game at all. Nothing like that. It, but if I had to pick out a flaw, that would be it. That's really nitpicking It there. is. <clears throat> I'll have to say, of the two games, I preferred this one. They were they were both awesome, but this I one prefer is, this, this one. Is, one. They're, I like them both. I, I think they're right. I mean, let's put it this way. Outhouse had a rep, and it, and it deserves that rep. Yeah. It's awesome. Convoy has no rep, and it deserves to be in the conversation. I'm not saying it's as good as Outhouse, but it's in the ballpark. No, I, I'm that's, fine with that's that. That's for sure. I think the, the reason why Outhouse uh, is, is a step above is the way that you have multipliers for your bonus based on how many sheets of toilet paper you have left. When you have, I think that is a necessity in a high score game uh, that there are, you know, some, both people might get to level six. But one person might get to level six better, yeah. And I think that you need to be rewarded for that, and, and uh, Outhouse does that absolutely perfectly. true. I mean, that's the, it's is a perfect score challenge absolutely. game, absolutely. Because you may get to level six or seven, but have not as much toilet paper, and yeah. uh, at least in my games, toilet paper didn't run out, and so. Oh, I but, lost from toilet paper once. Oh, really? Yeah. I think you must have got a little further than I did because I never saw the Crusher and I never saw the Whirly thing either. That, so there you go. Uh, did, was this on eBay? Any reviews? Oh, are you kidding? No. Yeah. Well, no. hey, you never I had to ask. So uh, our buddy Graham also had a look at Outhouse, and <laughs> there's a great picture. I wish I'd put it up in here. So from Graham, he writes. This is a Defender style of game with a weird game goal of protecting a toilet from vandals. I like the way you put that. <laughs> protecting a toilet from vandals and aliens that want to take all the toilet paper. Uh, this game has response from controls allowing you to move quickly to attack each enemy wave. As And as each attack wave remains quite similar each time you attempt a level, this increases the game's replay value. Yeah. My daughters, aged 11 and 6, both wanted to play this game. Maybe because it involved a toilet, but they both said they loved it. And even though the game looked very ancient, this is in quotes, it was a lot of fun. I agree that this is indeed a great game, a great and a lot of fun for me. And this is another Yeti on the top on the Thompson T05 hidden gem game, nine out of ten. And then there's a picture of Graham's daughter playing this on the laptop, which was, I love. It. I love that. Love very, it. very endearing. Hey, when you can get the youth of today to play something like this, you know the gameplay is there. Yeah, I actually showed this to Luke, and he was similarly amused by the fact that you were. I don't know what it is about people defending a toilet, but that, that seems to be. <laughs> I think we found the niche. We get, we need more toilet games. But uh, any any parting thoughts on this on the on the Dick Smith? System eighty or the or the fact that we found so many. Uh, ex- I mean, this this is amongst the best week the, of it, games it, we've ever was, had. This was two random games and they were both absolute hits. Yeah. Um, 
this this is certainly a game I would not buy the system for, but if you have any inkling of an idea of what you're doing with a computer, go emulate this thing today. It is that much fun. I never thought I'd want to buy, have a, something from the TRC Model 1 line, but I'm, I'm my... And I don't necessarily like the aesthetic factor that the TSA Model 1 has. Yeah, from but, our, that, but a Dick Smith System 80... Looks so much nicer. Mm, I'd like yeah. to have one. You know, I don't know if we can get that lucky again, Brent. But we're going to give was, it a shot. Let's that was, spin uh, this sucker. You know, I kind of... I didn't complain last week when it came up, but I was scared. Yeah. And uh, I... You I didn't was, look happy. I know Once that again, sure. the wheel knows better than I do. That's sure. Along with everybody else. Now, this week we added BBS games to the mix. Yes. Base, which you can play. So yes. we'll, we'll give this a whirl. So give it a good give it a good spin, Brandy. You got any uh, hopes? Any I'm dreams? literally... There's a lot of crazy... You know, everything on this thing is out of its mind. That was a good one. That was yeah. a good spin. Uh -oh. All right. Can you see what that uh -oh. is, Brandy? We've got... The MSX computer. Okay. Oh, boy, I know one person that's going to be happy about that. The MSX. Now, we've heard a lot about it. I've actually played some MSX stuff. So that this is, uh, this is after what we've been doing, this is yeah, a much is, easier thing to play. This is walk in the park. <laughs> uh, you know, Britt, we're only a few weeks away from the Thanks for Giving Marathon. Why don't you clue yes. everyone in on how it's going to go down? Thanks, <clears throat> Thanks for Giving Marathon. We are going to start that bad boy at 8 a.m. EST. Uh, we will get that translated into global time as soon as possible for you guys. I can't do it on the fly. <laughs> they know by now. They know. Uh, and, and we are going to play games for 10 consecutive hours. We are going to load in pie pieces that you, the viewer, has suggested. Spin those bad boy up. Pick our games. Uh we're probably going to play most of them on emulators well, for time's I, sake. I looked at what was a lot of stuff that was picked, and most of it we just don't have. Yeah. So what we'll, we'll probably emulate as we'll 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 hook up the actual systems for stuff that we own. But sure. A lot, a lot of it's sort of obscure, and some of it's more, um, uh, you know, like choose it from a var variety. Of yeah, systems. which is awesome. Yeah. I love so it. yeah. Uh, and we're going to do that for. Like I said, 10 consecutive hours. We're going to do uh, an arcade tour uh, for those who haven't seen the arcade. That's that's one minute gone. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to show off some uh, uh, decorations that we put up uh, based on your suggestions. Yep. And we are going to have a good time. It's not going to be about, hey, give us money. Hey, give the charity money. Uh, we're just going to... This is... Thanks for all those people that did that. Yeah. And we're going to try to be entertaining for 10 hours and have a good time. <laughs> it's hard to do it for 10 minutes. That's true. Thankfully, the boat will be around for a good chunk of this thing. He'll be sitting in for a lot of the uh, gaming. And uh, we'll, we'll just... We'll just laugh at boat for a while. That's always good. That'll be good for fun. Or maybe me and him will laugh at you. you never, or maybe right. you'll both laugh at me. Any way it goes. Uh, we want to thank our uh, good buddy, BarkBit, for our closing theme. And, of course, the uh, incomparable Duncan Styles for putting together all these cool backgrounds and stuff. We'd like to thank you guys for tuning in. Hey, we finally got our Twitch situation rectified, as you can, if you're watching this live. Uh, that was uh, four weeks of uh, head scratching, yeah. coughing, and general stupidity. But we think we've, I think we've got it licked. Uh, and uh, hopefully we'll be back as uh, we used to be every uh, Sunday morning at 9 a.m., uh, on, of course, on Thanks for Giving weekend, we will not be having that sh uh, 9 a.m. show because we'll be doing the 10-hour special. In fact, that's pretty much taken over all the programming that weekend. We'll have more on that uh, coming up. So, any parting thoughts? You want to say hi to anybody in the chat, Brent, before we roll on? Uh, a few people we had show up today. We had Picard. We had Delamont. We had Mohawk Mall. We had Duncan Styles, Amiga Bang, uh, the 6MM BRX. Made an appearance. Let's see if we got any lackers or lackers. Any lackers. <laughs> You're an idiot. Let's see if we got any lurkers we can call. Ten here. hours of this. Who, uh, can, who can say no? Jost eighty, Lurix, uh, Minrix. Good crap. D and K. A lot of people. You know what? Let me tell you something, Aaron. Yeah. For these live streams. Yeah. It's awesome when people come in and chat, and we 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 interact with chat more before and after the show, which is awesome. But it's the folks that just come in, watch, maybe have us in the background while they're, while they're fixing up their, they're their drinking, lunch. They're drinking gin and crying. Uh, uh, oh. you know, those, those are the people 
you guys don't get enough thanks, but we're always happy you show up. It's great. Yeah, thanks for not thanks for not participating in any way. No, they are participating here because they're <laughs> here and they're enjoying it. A salute to the lurker from Brent. Yeah, I love it. That's, Man, lurkers make the world go round. Well, that's in a creepy way. Um, again, we'll be back next week. BBS Gaming, Brent. That'll be that'll be a good time. So, before we go, I want to urge you one more time: go out and get yourself a Dick Smith System 80 emulator or a or TRS Model 80 one. Model One yeah. emulator, or maybe the real thing, and give that a whirl. Oh, you know, there's two things I want to mention. One. I am making, as I mentioned on Amigos, I'm making a valiant attempt to, to start using my Twitter more, Brent. So if you want to add me as your buddy, it's uh, at the Devil Bunny, all one word. Right. Uh, I've been on Twitter since Jump Street and then never used. It. Yeah. So I was like, this ain't gonna make. I was like, this ain't gonna work. So I'm trying uh, to uh, use Twitter. Secondly, I was talking to Brent about this. Uh, something that would be fun, and I know we're gonna get zero participation in this. I'm I'm predicting it, but. Uh, you know, every week we take reviews from whoever wants to send them. Uh, always Graham and sometimes other people. Uh, if you would like to, if you have any childhood memories of a system that we are covering uh, or have covered or want to comment on it or talk about the use of it or any of the games on it, feel free to send us a, a audio or even a video message. Uh, you can send, Or a review. Yeah. Excuse me. You can send anything you want over to the email you see there, argpresents at mail.com. Or you can at least send me an email where you can link it up on YouTube or whatever. We're more than happy to uh, to uh, snip that sucker right into the show. I would yep. love to see some people Absolutely. talk about their systems. I know some of these systems are very... I mean, we're having a passing look at the Dick Smith System 80, but some people, this may be their favorite machine, and they've got a cool childhood story or whatever. Absolutely. So we're always open to hearing anything you've got to say about it and playing it on the show. You know, Phil, we'll make you part of it. Heck, you can't... you got to do better than us. All right. That's the ball game, Brent. That's it. We'll see you next week for BBS Games, and until then, rock on. Dick Smith.